on this Monday night, a little coolish here the last several days, including in Little Rock, Jay Hobson, as I had a skull cap. I put that picture on my Twitter page. I do not like chilly weather, even though I'm from the Midwest. It's expected this time of year it's going to be chilly, but I don't like it, and therefore I was kind of prepared for it. I thought I should have brought some gloves, too, while we're at it. Well, I think, I think as, as football players and coaches, we kind of enjoy a little bit of cool. The, the August heat is uh, kind of makes you look forward to a nice little cool breeze, and, and uh, certainly it was a beautiful day for football in Little Rock. A touch of warmth back in the year this week, though, temperatures back in the 80s. Speaking of warm, the Braves were hot, and you're talking about a team that got on a pretty good run there. And just all in all, Coach, uh, we really got it going offensively, got a lot of things going there. Yeah, I thought uh, we started fast and uh, made some big plays. Rag came out with a big hitter early. Uh, started off with a really good special teams play uh, that uh, set us up quick. And then Rag and, and Joe and those guys had some, some nice some nice big plays. And uh, John uh, did, some, did a great job directing us and uh, you know, just came out fast. Well, let's recap the action here as the Braves, as we talked about, got off to a good start. And uh, don't forget, give us a call at 601-877-6595, 601-877-6595. We'll talk a little Braves football. We'll talk about UAPB. We'll give you the SWAC report. We'll give you all the homecoming activities and festivities that will start in about six days. And we'll look at what the team can expect during this bye week, trying to stay in that rhythm, trying to stay on a roll as they get ready for Grambling. Grambling, by the way, will be at home this week. The Braves are off, and uh, Grambling will host Alabama A&M this Saturday, so we'll be talking about Grambling next week. All right, uh, Jay Hobson, as we get into it here, a great kickoff return by Warford of 95 yards, and boy, we had some holes to run through, and boy, did we step through them. Yeah, great job by our, our kickoff return team, and uh, we started out the game like we wanted to. Um, just, you know, again, Marquise did a great job getting it down there, but also give those guys on that front line and, and our tight ends and fullbacks on kickoff turn great credit. They did a great job blocking and set up a, uh, a big return and a perfect way to start the game. Is it fact or fiction on special teams, whether it's punt or kickoff return, all you need to have is two or three misses and that opens up lanes? Is that fact well, or fiction? Well, no, I don't know. That's probably fiction because it just takes one, you one? Know, mm -hmm. really. So at the end of the day, uh, proud of those guys. They did a great job there. They, they started us out right. Talk about putting him back there, I mean, because he's had some, some pretty exciting runs. You know, Marquise is, is an explosive player. He really is. Uh, you know, and we have, like I said, we have a number of guys that are playmakers, you know, and, uh, you know, there's we probably have four or five guys that would be really good kickoff return guys. And uh, Marquise and Jarvis had both, you know, Jarvis took one back against Alabama State. Lamarvin took one back against the uh, uh, Valley, so I mean, we've got some guys back there that can go to the house. Is it feel when you decide who's back there, whether it's Ashley, whether it's Turner, or whether it's War? Sort of, kind of, yes, yes, sort of, kind of. So it was a 95 yard return, and then John Gibbs, who had another solid day rushing the football, one play and got into the end zone. Right, right, just a great read by John, a great way to start the day. So the Braves were up seven to nothing at that point, and then UAPB got Hanley involved, and we talked about him on the pregame show, six yards on a couple of carries. Kyle Coleman got involved with a 10-yard run. The Dante McDonald, the nine-yard run. They got in the Braves' territory, and then a, a touchdown by Coleman, 10 yards out, and it was a tie game just like that. That's right. I mean, it was a back-and-forth ball game early. Um, certainly, we didn't do a great job on kickoff. We set them up with midfield position, and that's not acceptable, but... Uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, they, they did a good job, good drive by Pine Bluff, and, uh, you know, it's 7-7. Seven seven. It was a 15-yard personal foul penalty that also helped set up that drive. No question. So it was a 7-7 seven seven game at that point. The Braves' next drive started with 12-26 left in the first quarter. Ragsdale, a 65-yard run, and I tell you what, the offensive line, I mean, you've got to give them all the credit. So many great holes right left side of the line. Uh, I think you're 100% right, Charles. Uh, you know, those guys... You know, I, I think, you know, they're a unit that is uh, motivated. They're a unit, I think, that uh, had finished the season last year with two or three guys that were all-conference players, and nobody was all-conference this preseason. So I think they're a, they're a unit, hopefully, that's, that uh, you know, has something to prove, and, and uh, uh, they're a unit 
that uh, has played a lot of football together and uh, very, uh, uh, you know, just done a great job for us, and, and they definitely played a great game on Saturday. Is it safe to say that that has been the big motivation so far? Well, I, I don't know if that's safe to say, but I think they're a unit that uh, is taking that to heart, and, and uh, so they're a unit that uh, is uh, you know getting better every week, and uh, certainly we need them to be that way if we're going to be successful. What do you see, if, if any, difference in the running style of Ragsdale this year than last year? Um, you know, Rag is a uh, young man that uh, – just plays hard every week. I don't know if there is a whole lot of difference. You know, he, you know, he's a competitor. He's a tough young man, and uh, he's a guy that uh, comes ready to play uh, every Saturday. You know, there's, you don't have to worry about Darren Ragsdale being ready to play on Saturday. I mean, he, he's going he's to be ready, and, and uh, you know, he's made countless big plays for us, and that's what we need him to do continually to, to make uh, big plays, and that's what he does. So with the big run there by Ragsdale, 65 yards, some scoring right off the bat, you know, two and a half minutes in, it was three scores, and the Braves were up 14 to seven at that point. And UAPB's next drive started at 12, the 12:09 mark of the first quarter. Uh, they got the three and out there, so the Braves had to dig in. And you talk about making adjustments. What adjustments from that first drive to the second drive that you saw? Well, I, we just executed. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I sound like a worn-out record, but. Uh, you know, we certainly we, we slipped down on one of the third down conversions, and they they converted, which would have got them off the field on the first drive, and and then we had a, a couple of misassignments that uh, you know led to some big gainers and eventually a touchdown, and, and uh, that's what we can't do, and, I, and we just shored that up. So after the D got to stop the Braves' offense, got it going again with 10:07 left in the first quarter. The Braves started at their own 38-yard line, marched down the field and Gibbs a four-yard run, and on that drive, um, Gibbs a six-yard gain, and Ragsdale a big 20-yard gain, Baker for eight, and Ragsdale another 13-yard gain. So then you got the running game going, and then, you know, the momentum carried there as you went up two scores. Right, we got got ahead, and, and uh, I thought we were playing real well there through the mid, uh, late first quarter, early second quarter, offensive and defensive. So at that point, it was 21-7. to seven. Then the Braves got another score, good field position off of Jamie Gillian, 15-yard punt. Pine Bluff was offsides. And then Joe Price, you talk about a, a competitor, you talk about a guy that's was, you know, chomping at the bit, waiting for an opportunity. You know him about as, as well as anybody. Just talk about his patience and waiting for his opportunity coming back off an injury. I'm, I'm as proud of Joe as anybody. Joe's a young man that, uh, you know, has uh, – you know, he's waited his turn, and uh, he got the ball and made the most of it, you know. And, and he's a young man that uh, uh, has made some nice plays around here, you know, two years ago. Certainly, I remember the time I, I, on my radio, uh, on the teleconference this morning, I said, you know, I think Joe's, if you remember two years ago against Pine Bluff, he broke one about 70 in a tight game. We won 21-16, and uh, he had another great game against Pine Bluff this year. So. Uh, He's a young man that uh, you know ran hard, uh, had two really nice big long runs, and uh, I'm just real proud of Joe. You know Joe Price, the football player. What about Joe Price, the student athlete, the the, the young man? Joe's actually got his degree, so you know Joe is a young man that uh, is working on a master's. He is a uh, young man that uh, is headed for great things, and, and uh, just 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 again very very proud of him. So it was 28 to seven off the Price touchdown run. Price had over 100 yards rushing in the game. One of two Braves players to get over 100 yards rushing, and it was a 28 to seven lead. Jay Hobson for your team, 175 yards rushing in that first quarter. Yeah, and, and again, those two we had two big long ones. Joe hit a long one, and Rag hit a long one. Both of them. Uh, uh, that's probably about 140 of that 175, so uh, a couple of big plays that were nice to see. So that'll do it for the first quarter. We'll take a time out here. We'll look at the second quarter when we come back. 601-877-6595 is our number. You send me an email, football at allcorn.edu. The Jay Hobson Radio Show rolls on. A bye week coming up for the Braves, one of two bye weeks this month. How unusual is that? We'll take it, though, because... We're sandwiched in between our big games, big rival games. Grambling on homecoming next week, a bye week this week, and then a bye week, and then Southern in Baton Rouge on Halloween. How fun will that be? We'll take a time out here. 12 minutes after 6 o'clock, the Jay Hobson Radio Show will return in one minute.
All right, welcome back live here at the Jay Hobson Radio Show on this Monday night from the beautiful campus of Alcorn State University, 601-877-6595, 601-877-6595, as we get ready for our bye week and get ready for homecoming. Um, one of my coworkers got a call about an hour and a half ago talking about setting up tailgating already, you know, trying to get on campus early to claim their spot for homecoming. So already folks kind of getting geared up for that, and so are we as Grambling makes their first appearance on our beautiful campus for the first time in eight years, and I'm looking forward to that. Jay Hobson, we talked about this big lead offensively, and then our secondary got involved, a couple of picks in the game, and Cantu had the first one late in the first quarter. Talk about that. Just a big play. Uh, just, uh, again, they, uh, Pine Bluff was driving in, in on the plus side of the field, and uh, Quentin uh, stepped up, and that was a big difference maker, big play for us, and uh, really started the even more momentum for us. So one of two picks on the day. Were you kind of concerned, you know, teams running the football, getting our second day involved, and I was, you know, we had 22 sacks going into the game, so we knew we could get pressure. But then trying to get our second day and get the picks, I guess if they don't throw it out there, it's, it's hard to do that. That's right. I mean, and again, um, we've had a few opportunities and not pulled it in. But uh, again, the big plays, uh, and that's what you need you know, from the back end. So in the second quarter, uh, the Braves went up 35 to nothing. Uh, at that point, uh, 35 to seven, as the Braves started at the 11:35 mark of the second quarter, uh, the Braves. Jarvis Turner getting involved, and I want to let's see if I can pull this up here, Jay Hobson, because I, you know, we, you know, on our pregame show, we always kind of talk about some things, and this is what you talked about in leading up, uh, and a big deal about Jarvis Turner. One guy, Coach Hobson, I get asked about this at least once a week. Jarvis Turner, that's the one guy that you know everybody just ready to, to have a breakout. Last Saturday, but I mean, Jarvis has made a lot of big plays here, and he'll make a lot of big plays for the rest of the season. And uh, you know, and we need it to, you know, in order to be successful, we need guys like Jarvis to make big plays for him. And boy, did he make one! No question. So talk about that route there. Is he got a 30-yard uh, pass from Gibbs at the 907 mark of the second quarter? Well, I mean, Jarvis is that style of football player. He he, he has game-breaking ability, and um, you know. Jarvis is a guy that's going to continue to make big plays here. Uh, I think he's definitely a next-level football player with a ton of potential, and uh, he is a guy that uh, is strong, physical, fast. Uh, you know, he's good on special teams. Uh, he can do some blocks well. Uh, Jarvis is, is just a talented football player, and. Uh, you know, again, like I said earlier, you know, he's made a lot of plays here, and he'll make a lot more. I know it's it's been tough on him. What have you told him, if anything, to kind of keep his head up? I, you know, I really don't say a lot to Jarvis because Jarvis makes plays. I mean, I think uh, I've been ha happy and pleased with the way Jarvis has played. And, and Jarvis is a young man that's a hard worker. You don't have to worry about Jarvis practice, weights. I mean, Jarvis does what he's supposed to do. And, uh, Jarvis, you know, he has a lot of highlights at Alcorn, and he'll have a lot more for the rest of the season. So Jarvis Turner got into the end zone, a 35-yard uh, reception from Gibbs, and that made it 35-7 to in the ball game. Braves got a, a, another uh, pick, and Jay Hobson, when you look at it, 35-7 to at the end of the first half. Uh, when you look at it, 54 yards uh, passing, and Jarvis Turner, um, got a big, a big touchdown. So just talk about your speech at halftime. You know, you're up. You got a little roll going. Well, the biggest thing we talked about at halftime was it's a 60-minute football game. We still got 30 minutes to play. Uh, you know, Pine Bluff is a well-coached football team. We knew they would come back out, and we wanted to start fast. And you know, I think one thing we found out at halftime it was very uh, a disappointing news. Uh, Trey Farrell's grandfather had passed, and uh, one thing that I think the guys kind of uh, rallied around Trey and, and said, look, we're going to come out here in the second half and dedicate this second half to, to his grandfather, and, uh, you know, we came out smoking in the third quarter. 
Well, that that's got to be tough getting the news in the heat of battle at, in in the locker room. It's tough, tough, and, and uh, he handled it like a true soldier. I don't know if you watched Trey, but he played hard and, and you know just everything he was on, he was running at full speed. And I think he did a great job of dedicating that second half to his grandfather. Nineteen minutes after, let's go to the phone lines. Willie Jones calling in from Mobile. He's called in the last several weeks, and he's on the line. Good evening, Willie. How you doing, Mr. How you doing? Good evening. How you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing, Mr. Hey, Willie. How's everything? I'm doing great. You know, so, um, great job on the win, and uh, it was, you know, very beautiful. Thanks, Willie. All right. Um, I told you last week I had something for you, Will. Uh, okay. It took me a week to think about this. Well, here it is. Um, in 1994, we played Grambling and Grambling the first game of the season. Steve McNair was the quarterback. It was his senior year. We lost to them 62 to 56. Yep. Now, now that game was the first game I've ever been to as a person. I was five years old. I was I was, I was, a, I was a child. <laughs> well, that game meant something as far you know. I, I don't want to you know uh, do much like that year, but that game was a real big gremlin game. And yes. that game was really, 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 you know, strong. Well, we haven't had a game as far as meaning something like that until now. The game that we're playing on the 17th, it's probably just as much as important as 1994 when it seemed like there was a quarterback, in my opinion. In my opinion. Just, you know, just you know, we're both, you know, smoking as far as, you know, in the swag and, you know, this is, you know, a big thing as far as going to the swag championship. Okay, so the reason why I'm asking, I'm saying this is, I've seen the past two weeks whenever they played Prairie View and they played Jackson State the other night, um, they're trying to sit back and just let Jonathan that quarterback from Grambling, he just sitting back and just let him throw the ball, and he's barbecuing him. What do we have to do to slow him down? Because I feel like if we slow him down, then we have no chance of it. So what do we have to do to slow them down on offense? Because that's the only thing I'm really worried about, and a lot of people all worry about is really their offense because they're putting up, you know, points out of this world. Yeah. And I feel like if we slow them down, you know, we can, you know, get out of that game with the win. Well, we're gonna have to, you have to come to the office. We're gonna have to sit down, and we might have to sit down in, in, in private. I don't, I don't know. If, I don't know if I, I need to go over the airways to do what I think we need to do uh, uh, to win the game. But he's certainly a great, great football player. Uh, we've definitely got to play well on all sides of the ball, uh, offense, defensively, special teams. Uh, we know they have an outstanding football team, uh, and last year they got us 28-21 at Grambling. So uh, definitely. Um, you know, it's a game that we got to prepare hard for. And again, um, football is a multi-dimensional game, and uh, we certainly uh, have to be well prepared in all phases. And I know that probably doesn't answer your question completely, but uh, also Charles knows me for a long time. There's certain things you have to keep to your cuff a little bit. But uh, again, certainly one thing about it is uh, he has been a great player for Grambling and, and made a ton of tremendous plays. and. We know we have a, a great football player coming into town uh, October 17th. And I can just say this, Willie, I was there as well. It, it was probably one of the biggest crowds as a Grambling grad myself, and I can attest to this. It was one of the biggest crowds that I've ever seen at Eddie Robinson Stadium. Eddie Robinson Stadium at that time, it was a 62-56 game, and a lot of folks remember that game. It was Air Mc, the late Steve McNair slinging it around. It was just, you know, it was down to the final seconds. One of the greatest, you know, swag games you'll ever see in person. It really was, and I'm expecting the same kind of game on the 17th, but I think we're going to be in the final. Willie, we always appreciate you, man. I appreciate you calling in. You're going to be here too, right? I'll be there on the 15th. Okay. Uh, I'll be on the 15th, and uh, I'll be staying on campus with a friend of mine. Okay. And um, I will come and. You come see me. I'll, you know, I will, and we will talk. Okay, sounds good. We look forward to seeing you, man. I, I, I'll call you next week. Okay. Um, I, I'll be here this Thursday, and, you know, 
Okay, thanks, Willie. Appreciate you calling. All right, Willie, we appreciate you calling. He calls in every week and just, just loves what's happening with this Braves football program. True, true Brave and wonderful all tonight. And, and again, it's uh, just a great, great, uh, great spirit and appreciate Willie. 23 minutes now, 24 minutes after the hour. Of course, you can watch the Jay Hobson Radio Show on social media on Facebook, facebook.com slash ASU Mask Com Department on YouTube on Twitter and on Instagram, you can check out the Jay Hobson Radio Show. We'll take this time out and we'll continue to break down and recap the UAPB game, put a capper to it, look at the SWAC report, kick some things around, and we'll look ahead to homecoming and look ahead to the bye week coming up for the Braves. How much time off, if any, will they have? We'll talk about that as we roll along on the Jay Hobson Radio Show. We'll be back in one minute. Welcome back. It's 25 minutes after the hour. I got a, a tweet from Briggs on Twitter. Coach and Charles, can I interest you and Coach Hobson in a pregame plate of barbecue for homecoming? <laughs> I can go postgame. I don't pregame. Uh, wow. Well, of course, we know that's, that's going to be the big thing on, uh, on homecoming. And uh, we'll be talking about that as we go along. All right, uh, Jay Hobson, you talked about it. A little bit of emotion at halftime. Third quarter coming out. You know, the, talk about the importance of reestablishing momentum. How tough? And Monty Coleman talked about it last week. How his team has struggled in the third quarter. He talked about coming out a little earlier, out of the locker room, just not sitting around. How tough is it to regain, you know, your momentum after playing so well for the first 30 minutes and picking it back up again? Well, I think uh, sometimes it is tough. Sometimes it's not. I think the maturity of your team is what that depends on. Uh, you know, certainly uh, you, you hope you, uh, you guys understand the situation they're in. At that time, we were up pretty good, but uh, football history is filled with great comebacks of teams that uh, came out flat in the second half. So uh, something that you certainly have to talk to them about and guard against. Uh, and again, it's a time to, uh, you know, you, you get to come out that first third quarter, first few minutes of the third quarter and establish things because if you do, if you're up, at that time we were up, what, Charles, 28? You know, if you come out and you're able to, you know, go up 35 and, you know, all of a sudden you move it into the fourth quarter, uh, now it's a hard, there's a hard road for the, the team that's down. But if you come come out and all of a sudden, bang, bang, that 28-point lead turns into a 14-point lead with seven minutes to go in the third. Now you know you've got a 60-minute ball game on your hands, so uh, it's important to come out fast. And, and you've seen these big, you know, tremendous comebacks in which it could start with a big play, a pick six or a big drive, but it could start with the littlest of things that when you're playing on the road, a little bit of confidence by the home team, even though they're down, can propel them in, into some big momentum. No question. I mean, it's uh, football, like I said, I mean, history in football, so you have to be ready. You got to play 60 minutes. You can't play 30. So UAPB got the ball to begin this third quarter. And they started at their 17-yard line, and the Braves got their second pick as Eric Foster with the pick at the Lions 44. Great, great athletic play by Eric. Really, uh, you know, I thought the kid was open on the out route, and Eric just snatched it out of there. That, that was a very impressive play. Eric's really uh, playing some really good football, and just extremely proud of him. What's his biggest upside? Because we're calling his name more and more. Eric is a complete football player. He's athletic. Uh, you know, he's he is a young man that uh, you know. I, I, I remember the first time I watched him practice. I was like, wow, he, he could be special. He's a young man that uh, just keeps you know getting better, and uh, he 
he's a smart young man, engineering student, and, um, just uh, really playing some good football. So got the second Brave pick of the game. So the Braves started at their 42-yard line with 12 minutes left. Warford for 39 yards. It was first and goal from the three, and then John Gibbs, another rushing touchdown from three yards out. Boy, the game, you know, Coach McNair, Fred McNair, the quarterback's coach, talks about how the game is slow, slows down as you really get into a rhythm. It, I, I am, would imagine for John Gibbs, this thing has slowed down a lot for him. But John's a senior, and he started for four years, so that's a huge advantage to be a four-year starter at quarterback. Very few, we talked about it earlier in the year, Charles, very few quarterbacks get a chance to start four years. You know, so he's got a tremendous amount of snaps under his belt, and that's always a good thing. So the Braves are up 42-7 to at that point, and then they added to it as the Braves' next drive started at the Lions' 33-yard line. And things kind of got, I wouldn't say chippy, but uh, you know, some players ejected in the game. And there was a player disqualified. Reagan was disqualified on Pond Bluff's next drive after the Braves went up 42 to 7. On well, the Braves' next drive after that started at their 33 yard line. Ragsdale for nine yards and Gibbs to Jordan Payne. Just another solid year for Jordan. And a lot of people don't know that he arrived on this campus as a quarterback. And man, on that other side, as a receiver, doing a heck of a job. Jordan has had a tremendous season. He's had a tremendous career here at Alcorn, and, and uh, he was our team captain. And I told him in the fourth quarter, I promise he's going to be team captain again. <laughs> Jordan uh, is a, a young man that uh, just a solid leader. Like I said, a winner. Uh, just he, he gets it, and a very mature young man. I mean, just just accepting that role that he's had. I mean, just being a quarterback, and he probably thought he'd be slinging it around. I said this earlier. He could Jordan could play. And I've said it. Four or five times, he could play anything. You could put him at Jordan Payne. Could play quarterback. He could play receiver. He could play running back. He could play tight end. He could play linebacker. He could play safety. You know, he could play in a, a ton of different positions. And uh, he's just very—he's a multi-talented athlete. So after Payne's touchdown, it was 48 to seven in the PAT. Um, you talked after the game about uh, special teams a little bit. Yeah, I mean, uh, I thought that was probably the one of our weaker games this year. So certainly uh, looking for a big improvement here in two weeks. It was 48 to seven at that point, and then Lenoris Footman came into the ball game on the Braves' next drive, which was at the 6:20 mark of the third quarter, and then on a lateral, uh, UAPB got the football, and then they got a touchdown as McDonald from 27 yards out. So I mean, obviously had a big lead, but that's something you don't want to see. No, you don't. And uh, again, we have to lead our keys. So at that point, Jay Hobson. Um, had a big lead, 48-14 to 14 at the end of the third quarter. And kind of me and Emmanuel Barnes were kind of talking when would John Gibbs and the ones, you know, get the rest of the night off. He, he probably thought he would take it into the fourth. Emmanuel Barnes thought I kind of figured after that drive to go up 48-14 to 14 that we would, 48-7, uh, to 7, that we would see, you know, Footman and the other guys in. We put Foot in probably about seven minutes to go in the third. Yeah. We played him early. And, and uh, Foot came in. I was a little bit worried after that fumble because you know Foot had the, the uh, we uh, you know they got that touchdown and uh, but again the Norris deserves every right to get the snaps he can he's he's a tremendous football player made up with it with the touchdown in the fourth quarter and uh, just you know again he the Norris is an excellent football player and it's great to get him as many snaps as we can because he deserves it. 32 minutes after the hour. We owe you a bottom of the hour break. We'll get to that on the other side of this one minute timeout. More than halfway through the Jay Hobson radio show, following one of two bye weeks coming up for the Braves. We'll take this one minute break and we'll be right back on the Jay Hobson radio show. Great place to receive a great education, and here's why. All good is ranked as a top university in the top schools, regional universities in the South category of the U.S. News and World Report. That's colleges rank ends. There are other great reasons to choose Old Court State University. Whether it's personal, whether it's in education, anywhere you turn, there's always a helping hand. If they want to be challenged to learn and grow and be in an environment that is nurturing in a place where they're not just a number, where people know you by name, then I would tell them to come to Old Court. For more information, call toll free 1-800-222-6790 or visit us on the web at www. 
www.oldcoin.edu. You are tuned in to VR. All right, welcome back. Uh, let's take this time out, uh, 10 seconds for station identification. We're past the bottom of the hour, so we'll take that right now. Let's pause for 10 seconds. You're listening to the Alcorn Football Radio Network. All right, 34 minutes after the hour. Charles Edmond here with Brazehead Football Coach Jay Hobson as we recap the UAPB game. Another tweet, Jay Hobson, from uh, Mr. T. He asked Coach about the increase of fans on away games and how does this help motivate the players? It, it's always helpful uh, with the away games because sometimes with the away games, if you don't have um, great fan support, you have to kind of create your own momentum and your own fan support on the sideline. And one thing with, uh, with great fan support is you know you have that that encouraging spirit that kind of lifts you up. So uh, we certainly appreciate all our fans that came up to Little Rock and. Just want to give them a shout out and a thank you for supporting us and following us all the way up there. And there was a purple and gold tent when we pulled up, and uh, you know a lot of purple and gold in Little Rock on Saturday. All right, as we look at the uh, fourth quarter, Jay Hobson, the fourth quarter highlights. We talked about Joe Price, Rags, Dale Baker. Talk about the job Aaron Baker did on Saturday. Just tremendous. Ran hard. And Aaron gets hard yards and uh, blocks well, and you know just a complete back. That's something that we all know Aaron, Aaron's low to bring down. But, uh, again, there's a lot of plays early where Aaron kept drives alive. So, again, I thought a really good day by Aaron also. I've seen him on campus. Has he lost some weight? Has he picked up weight? What, what is I think he's pretty much the same. Same. You know, Aaron's a strong, strong young man, strong back. And, uh, you know, again, they play really good football. Well, the Braves um, added to their lead. It was 54-14. to 14. Uh, Jordan Payne, 22-yard run in the fourth quarter. And then the Braves added another touchdown as uh, Footman, a 22-yard carry to put the Braves over 60. And on that drive, it started with 12 minutes and 26 seconds left. Joe Price, another big run, 54 yards from the 6 to UAPB's 40. Just talk about that run. That was a big run because we were kind of backed up, and, and UAPB had kind of had us deep in our own field position for about two straight series. And, uh, you know, the defense was holding, but they were putting us back down inside the 15. And we were kind of staying on their end of the field. And then Joe popped that one, and, and it kind of just opened it all up. And, and, and we took field advantage again. The Braves win 61-14. to 14. We owe you another break, and we'll take it right now. When we come back, we'll have the final numbers for this game. In, in Little Rock, we talked about it last week. And in case you might not know, the Braves will be playing in Little Rock at War Memorial Stadium again October the 1st, 2016. The Arkansas Razorbacks and the Alcorn Braves from Little Rock in the 2016 season. We'll take a one-minute break, go inside the numbers of this Pine Bluff contest. We'll be right back. It's 37 minutes after the hour. The Jay Hobson Radio Show will return in one minute. Welcome back. We are live here 38 minutes after the hour. The Jay Hobson Radio Show. The Braves have a bye week this week. Grambling at 2 o'clock on homecoming and then another bye week. And then Southern University in Baton Rouge on Halloween. Well, that should be a lot of fun. This month of October. I, I can't believe we're already in the month of October. It's just incredible. The season, when it starts, it goes into fast forward, doesn't it? Why is that? 
we sat down for <laughs> 25 years, Charles. I don't know, but it does. And before you know it, it'll be Thanksgiving and Christmas and in 2015, you can put a bow on it. It'll be over. All right, let's uh, look at the numbers here, Jay Hobson. 418 yards rushing the football. Joe Price, 141 yards. And Ragsdale, 132. Or just the running attack was awesome, averaging 8.4 yards per carry. Yeah, and, you know, again, we kind of pride ourselves being a balanced football team. But when you get ahead early, we talked about this last year some, when you get ahead early, you know, I mean, you actually are going to run the ball a little bit more. And when we got up early, and, and that is what it is. Then John Gibbs, 7 of 10, 103 yards. So he was pretty efficient, I thought. Uh, Jay Hobson, all in all, two touchdowns. I was sacked one time. Yeah, I thought John did a great job leading our offense. So the rushing attack, John Gibbs with three rushing touchdowns. So he's, you know, you talk about one of the top rushers in this conference. I mean, John Gibbs with three rushing touchdowns. He had another game in which he had a couple of rushing touchdowns. So when you have that dynamic, just how special is that as you look at it? Well, it's John. I think last year was, what is he, the only player in FCS or FBS to throw for over 2,500 yeah. and run for over 1,000 or whatever. But John's a multi-talented athlete, and uh, he can do it with his arm or his legs. So of the receiving yards, Jordan Payne with two touchdowns, three receptions, Warford with a couple of receptions, and Jarvis Turner, one reception. I thought Hayden McRaney had a pretty active leg, four punts averaging 44 and a half yards. Yeah, he did some nice punts and a few good kickoffs. Then Anthony Williams the third. Talk about his, his special teams opportunities. I thought he had a couple of cracks at it. We were Saturday. close. Yeah, Anthony was close. and He was close two or three times. And then uh, Marquise had one he was close on. So... Uh, Hopefully we'll get Talk about, uh, Coach, you look at offense, defense, special teams players of the week, you nominate those, give us those. Well, what we've done this week, Charles, we've, uh, we're have we going to wait, and we do that uh, game week of uh, next Monday. So I will give you next Monday. We gave them off today, and so that will be something we'll talk about next Monday. Congratulations to Darian Anderson, the defensive player of the week from the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Spearheaded the defensive effort for the Braves, a game high, 11 stops, and the Braves' big win over UAPB. And uh, Anderson was the only player to reach double digits in tackles from either side, and has also he also has one and a half tackles for a, a loss in that game. So congratulations to Marion Anderson. Talk about his development. You know, just I think he's played really good football this year, and he's a young man that uh, has waited his time. You know, Will was there first two years he's come in and, and really we have what I consider three starters inside the inside back you know you got Damon Darren, and you got uh, uh, Mike you know so they all played tremendous football and DA's uh, made countless big plays for us on special teams over the years and now he's making a lot of big plays on the defense. I think defensively Jay Hobson that defensive line up front I'm telling you I mean, when they, when they get their hands on you, I mean, that pocket collapses. I, I thought they were terrific in terms of just keeping UAPB off balance, with the exception of that first drive, obviously, but that's why you make adjustments. That's right. And those, those young men have played extremely hard, and, and just uh, really proud of those guys. All right, we'll take a time out here. we got a little Q&A coming up, and we'll set the stage for this bye week coming up. Give us a call, 601-877-6595, 601-877-6595. Six five nine five. Forty two minutes after six o'clock, the Jay Hobson Radio Show returns in sixty seconds. Ready ASU and surrounding areas as the State University Extension Program hosts the Extension This Week Radio Show. Extension This Week will offer weekly highlights of Extension's current and future programs, events, and activities. It will also offer important information to areas such as community gardening, health and fitness, and community air live from the reservation every Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. hosted by 4-HU specialist Ms. Manola Irving. So tune in to WBLL 91.7 FM all for public radio or you can also listen on the web at www.wbrl.org. All right, 43 minutes after the hour, give us a call, 601-877-6595, 601-877-6595. You can follow me on Twitter, Tall Man Radio. If you can tweet a question, we've had a couple of those already, and we got another one, Coach, and 
You said the players there, they're, they don't, they don't, there's no practice today, correct? No practice today. Okay, so we got a tweet from one Darian Anderson here, and his question is: Ask Coach Hobbs, do the players get a Swag Player of the Week T-shirt? <laughs> to tell him, no, they do not. They get an Alcorn State Player of the Week. Uh, tell Da, we go, we give him, a, I'll give him a Haynes T-shirt right there for that. Tell him I get, give him one of those, uh, I get one of those Sharpies out. And I'll write it on there for him, but tell, tell him uh, it's, it's got to be elected by the coaches. <laughs> wow, okay. Darren Anderson, we appreciate that. And obviously he's... Tell him we're proud, we're proud of you, though, D.A. I'm glad you're listening. <laughs> All right, 44 minutes after the hour. Um, coaches, we put a capper on the UAPB game, and we talked about it when you walked in the studio. And it's, it's just so unfortunate, and I know you're not going to talk about it much, but the game... You know, I wouldn't. I don't know. If chippy was the word, and it happens unfortunately when teams. Well, teams sometimes, are down. sometimes Charles, when you know, you hate to say it, but sometimes in games of that magnitude, when they when it gets away, you know, when it's a 40, 50 point game, yeah. sometimes it gets more like that than when it's twenty one seventeen or seventeen fourteen. And unfortunately. Um, Nobody, you know, unfortunately, you know, it's, it's not something that uh, you like seeing. Not so, but at the end of the day, um, you know, sometimes under the pile, you don't know what happens, and, you know, you have to sort that stuff out. But, uh, you know, again, I've been there as a player and a coach. In the last minute, well, I'll tell you, that, that, and I've seen you on the field more Saturday than, than any other time since, since you've been here trying to calm things down. Well, a lot of times, you know, that, a lot of times, at the end of a game, sometimes that happens a little bit. Frustrations get, you know, and uh, one thing we try to always tell our players, that's coming. You know, when you're up by 50, that's coming. Just just get away. No matter what happens, just get away. And uh, that's part of the growing process. I just think uh, the way the officials handled it, I mean, we had three players ejected in the game. Well, I thought they did a good job. I really did. I thought they did a good job. I thought they, uh, you know, it was, uh, I thought they did what they're supposed to do. So the Braves win going away 61 to 14. We'll take this time out and we'll be right back here on the Jay Hobson radio show. Your business owner and promote your product. Look no further than all points of the University Athletic Marketing and Advertising. Great way to get the word out. Whether it's on pocket schedule cards, whether it's radio advertising on the all point sports radio network, whether it's online, whether it's Website advertising on allpointsports.com. Signage at the various athletic venues, as well as game sponsorship opportunities. Athletics has it all. For more information, call Athletics Director Darren Horn, 601-877-6500, or Larry Smith at 601-877-2413. Great sponsorship packages are available. That's Allporn State University. Athletics, marketing, and advertising. More information on the morning at 601 877 or Larry Smith at 601 877 All right, welcome back. 47 minutes after the hour. Give us a call. We appreciate the text and the tweets. 601 877 You can send us an email, football at allcorn.edu. We appreciate those, and uh, we want to remind everybody uh, next couple of road games, Gerald Quinn, who's uh, offered transportation to the various uh, places, uh, Montgomery as well as Little Rock, and uh, he's got another bus cranked up, ready to roll, going to Baton Rouge and Texas Southern. And of course, the next road trip will be to Baton Rouge, and that bus will leave from Brookhaven. We'll pick up folks in Jackson, Hazel versus and Macomb on the way to Baton Rouge, and it's a turnaround trip. So give them a call, 601-754-1177, 601-754-1177. They're getting a Texas Southern bus ready for Houston, and that's going to be $78 from what he's uh, texting me here. And the trip to Baton Rouge is $35. So if you want some transportation going to Baton Rouge and or Houston, uh, give Gerald Quinn a call. The bus will leave from Brookhaven to the various destinations. All right, 48 minutes after, as we kind of pivot into the bye week, wanted to ask you something, Coach. You know, and I'm blessed and privileged and fortunate to be with the football team. You know, I'm sort of on the support personnel side, 
there are three buses that go, and you know the, the two player bus coaches in. And I'm on the third bus with the trainers and managers, so I get a chance to see you know the team in their mental state, especially on game day, and. Myself, along with Compliance Officer Jason Cable, we're talking about this in the lobby on Saturday. The level of focus, and I look at you, and it's a totally different demeanor six hours before game day. You know, you got your meetings with the coaches, the team meets four hours before kickoff, they load the bus and they go. And, you know, Jason Cable worked at Jackson State, and he was talking about Rick Comagy, how on game day, he likes to talk and chat it up. I mean, you know. Everybody, everybody's different. It, yeah. There's nothing to it. It's just, it's just you, you are who you are. And that's just who I am. Yeah. So when you look at it, Coach, just, just talk about the inner the inner self during that during that period of time. I mean, just going through the motions. You can, I can tell, you know, for some folks, you're kind of playing the game and going over everything possible. Well, I just think coaches are themselves. You can't be a good coach unless you're yourself. And Coach College is a great coach. You know what I mean? Everybody's – Every coach is different, and every coach has a different demeanor and a different thing. And, and Jay Hobson is just going to be Jay Hobson. I'm not going to be – I'm never going to try to be anybody else. I'm never going to try to – I'm just going to be who I am. And that's all you can do as a coach. And, and you have to be who you are, and that's just what we do. Is, is it nervous energy, you know, several hours before? Hey, if you're not a little bit uh, nervous before a football game, you probably need to get out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. You know, so at the end of the day, definitely, uh, I think everybody uh, that plays this game always gets a little excited before the game. Praise that football coach Jay Hobson on the Jay Hobson Radio Show. Two weeks. We got two bye weeks coming up, and uh, kind of unusual deal there. Um, how did that come about? Was that just you know, quirks in the schedule? Well, what's happened, Charles, is we've gone to a 11-game uh, schedule this year from 12. So we've actually lost a game, and we're actually playing Jackson State on Thanksgiving instead of yeah. before Thanksgiving. So what's happened, our season has been stretched out a week, and we've lost a game. So what happens is you naturally have more weekends in between. Wow. So two bye weeks. Did we try to get get a game in, perhaps? Did we we can't. In? We can't. It's the FCS. You can only play eleven. So that, that's can, the, oh, that's the max. That's yes. the max. You can't. You can't play twelve this year. All right. Fifty-one minutes after the hour, we'll take a time out here, and when we come back, we'll look ahead to the bye week. We'll give you the homecoming activities, and we'll talk about what we can expect from this Braves football team over the next few days as we kind of get into this bye week here, one of two in the next three weeks. We'll talk about the homecoming activities and we'll look ahead to what the team can expect during this bye week. We'll recap the SWAC scores as well. So we'll be back in one minute, 51 minutes after the hour. The Jay Hobson Radio Show rolls on in a minute. Yeah, that just got me thinking. You know, that just, just you know, when you watch those things, just watching. And it just got me thinking about that, you know, so, how, just the whole the mental part of it, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm a lion, man. <laughs> I'm not changing. I'm close to 50 years old. I'm not changing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just, everybody's different, though, Charles. I've coached for 15 different coaches, man. Everybody, yeah. Everybody's different. You know what I mean? So that's just, that's just the reality. Are, are, are some, some of the coaches jovial? Oh, and no question. I've, I've had bosses that are, you know, the one thing I've learned, and this, you better be who you are. You know what I mean? You better not try to be anything else but who you are. Yeah. And that's, that's the reality of it. Yeah. yeah I've, I've been on North Pole, South Pole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It is. This is looking at the grind. All right, here we go, 52 minutes after the hour. Let's go recap some of the scores here on this Monday night as the Braves have a bye week of the games this past Saturday. And Jackson, their high school day, Grambling won 59 to 27 over Jackson State. And Coastal Carolina, the number one team in the FCS, beat Alabama A&M 55 to nothing. And Prairie View beat Faith 42 to nothing. And Jacksonville State beat Mississippi Valley 49 to nothing, and those were the games this past Saturday. Uh, games this week in the Southwestern Athletic Conference, of course, Alcorn and Jackson State are off. Grambling at home at Eddie Robinson Memorial Stadium, and they will host Alabama A&M. And, of course, homecoming starts next week in a full week of activities starting on Sunday. There will be the Gospel Explosion here on campus at the James L. Bolden Campus Union Ballroom from 6 until 9 on Monday. There will be a fashion show 
on Tuesday, 81 Jump Street. Uh, we'll be at the Campus Plaza from 7 until 10 o'clock. On Wednesday, the SGA inauguration will take place here on campus at the James L. Bolden Campus Union Ballroom, as well as a Living Color Party will take place at the E.E. E. Simmons Gym. That's on Wednesday, October 14th. On Thursday, the coronation will take place at the Whitney Arena on Thursday from 7 until 10. On Friday, October 16th, there will be a big block party, uh, WJMI Jams, a Black College Tour Pep Rally at the Amenities Parking Lot here on campus from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. The Greek Step Show will also take place on Friday, and that's uh, $15 in advance, $20 at the door at the Davy O. Whitney Complex Homecoming Concert, also on Friday, featuring Dougie Fresh, and I'll be interested in that deal. There's Dougie Fresh will perform. And then the Homecoming Parade, it's at 9 o'clock. Keep that in mind, folks, an hour earlier than the usual 10 o'clock start time for the Homecoming Parade around the campus horseshoe. And, of course, the big game, Alcorn versus Grambling at 2 o'clock. Well, this time next week, Jay Hobson, you'll be into your preparations and, of course, you know, the usual spiel and speech that coaches give the week of homecoming. And uh, what do you usually tell your team the week of homecoming? Well, I mean, homecoming is always a week of distraction and, and certainly uh, we just have to make sure our young men are focused on, on our homecoming, which is the 2 o'clock kickoff of the game. And hopefully everybody will be considerate of that fact and just make sure our guys, if you see them around campus, make sure they're in bed. <laughs> Let them tell them to go to bed and, uh, hey, and uh, that's, that's what we need from the students and uh, everybody on campus. Just uh, take care of our guys and, and make sure we're, we're focused on 2 o'clock kickoff. So coaches, we wind this down here. Talk about the week coming up for your team. Rest, rust, trying to, you know, balance all of that out as you have two bye weeks coming up in the next three. Well, we certainly, uh, this is a great week for fundamental work, and I think that's something that uh, always in the middle of the season is big. I think that's why I really like the fact that we have our two open days in October because it gives us a chance. You know, we all are already kind of through the first phase of the season. Now we have a middle game in our second phase of the season, and it gives us a chance to really work on fundamentals and stuff that, you know, when you're in the grind of the season, you kind of uh, – let slip a little bit, so hopefully they'll uh, refocus on those things and uh, get better. You know, we look at it, and somebody was asking me this the other day, you know, we're scoring a bunch of points and playing some pretty good football. Of course, you don't know how these things are going to work out when you when the schedule's put together, but, you know, when you're playing so well, you, you kind of wish in the back of your mind, man, I just want to keep this grind going, or do you just really welcome a bye week regardless? No, it doesn't matter. It's, it's all, that's all fan talk, you know what I'm saying? Football has nothing to do with that. At the end of the day, you know, it's like a field's a field. It doesn't matter if we're playing Alaska or Little Rock or, or, or Lorman, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we got to just go out prepared and do the things we got to do. Well, what are a couple of things that, that you'll be working on this week? Just, you know, steps, stances, just all all basic fundamental things, you know, just, just trying to become a better football player. All right, 57 minutes after the hour here on the Jay Hobson radio show. The SWAC came out with their uh, information for the SWAC championship game at NRG Stadium. Ticket prices start at $17. Uh, so for more information, you want to go to Ticketmaster.com, and the championship game will take place uh, in December, and R. Kelly will be the feature performer there, 844-573-0849, or online at SWACfootball.org. There will be a SWAC uh, Hall of Fame reception. December the 3rd at the JW Marriott in Houston, Texas, along with a full uh, week of activities there as the SWAC is getting that out. Well, Coach, you know, you talked about it last week, you know, where the Little Rock trip, we, you know, Atlanta, Montgomery, you know, right now, I mean, we've got one more long one to go, and you know, it'll be interesting to see just trying to stay focused and keep things going right now. Just talk about how you feel about your team at this point in the season. Well, I mean, we're we're four and zero. We wish we were five and zero, but uh, you know that's we are where we are, and uh, certainly uh, you know we got a long way to go. I mean, this season's only you know after the Grambling game will be just barely over halfway. We're right under halfway right now, so a lot of football left, and uh, our, our young men understand that they we've got to play good football every week if we want to achieve our goals. Because if we, if we don't, you don't achieve your goals. If you do, you do. So. Uh, 
do have a lot of football left to play. One thing that I just continue to be impressed about here is the fact that, you know, despite everything, you know, how we've handled it, the maturity of this football team, not too high, too low. You know, we, we get pushed around a little bit, 7-7 seven, seven game, and we just come out. The poise of this team just continues to impress me. Well, we've got an older class, so hopefully that uh, is something we will maintain. You know, we have, like I said, we have six games left, and uh, that's something that's kind of our charge. We, well, we, we have to do that if we're going to be successful. All right, Coach Hobson, we'll talk to you next week as we make the turn and get ready for homecoming and grambling next week. Okay, Charles. Thanks a bunch. All right, that's Coach Jay Hobson on the Jay Hobson Radio Show, a bye week for the Braves this week. And next Saturday at 2 o'clock, it will be the Grambling Tigers for the first time in eight years. Grace our beautiful campus, a 2 o'clock kick. We'll preview that game. We'll hear from Roderick Fobbs. And we'll have some interviews coming up as well. We'll talk with Mark Marcus Ward, Executive Vice President of uh, the Alcor Foundation and Vice President of Institutional Advancement. We'll talk with uh, Larry Smith. We'll talk with Alcorn President Dr. Alfred Rankins, Jr. So a bunch of interviews next week as we set the stage for a homecoming and the big homecoming game. That'll do it here from the beautiful campus of Alcorn State University on the Alcorn Football Radio Network. For our producer, Jamario Brooks, I'm Charles Edmond on the Jay Hobson Radio Show. We'll talk to you next Monday night. So long.